This topic is on the basics of entomology. What is entomology? Entomology is the study of insects. So insects, they belong to arthropods, phylum arthropods, class insecta or hexapoda. Any member of the largest class of the phylum arthropoda is the insect which is itself the largest of the animal phyla. So let us know some basics of the insects, the insect morphology and the importance of insects. So this is the structure of an insect. Insects have segmented bodies the body is divided into different regions in the form of segments. Here the body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. You can see three body region. The head which bears the two antennae and mouth parts, eyes, the three segmented thorax, the thorax is three segmented here, you can see, which usually has three pairs of legs. You can see the three segmented thorax with three pairs of legs. In adults, and usually one or two pairs of wings. You can find one or two pairs of wings also. So the abdomen. The abdomen is also segmented. So this is the external morphology of the, an insect. The many segmented abdomen inside which contains the digestive system, excretive system and reproductive systems. Or you can say that these are the internal organs which are present inside. What are the characteristic features of class insecta? The body, as you have seen, is divided into three segments, head, thorax, and abdomen, consisting of three pairs of legs that also you have seen. You can see this is a grasshopper, which the example is given and consists of three pairs of legs. That is why these insects are known as hexapods, and they consist of wings for flying, jumping. These wings are one pair or two pairs, depending on the type of the insect. And a pair of antennae are present, you can see in the front. These are pair of antennae. These are all the characteristic features of an insect. Huh? The respiration takes place by the internal air tubes known as tracheae. Remember, tracheal system is very well developed in the insects, so so that effective respiration takes place, and that is when the insects are very much active because of the effective tracheal system present in the insects. Genital opening is situated at the posterior end of the body. You can see here in the form of an, this is a posterior portion of the body. When you can see the reproductive organs, this is a male and cerci, the cerci, the male cerci are present here female ovipositor are present in the posterior side. So genital openings are present in the 
tips of tip of the body. Presence of metamorphosis is seen in insect term. So what is metamorphosis? Growth and development of an insect is known as metamorphosis. That is the changes which takes place in the life cycle of an insect is known as metamorphosis. The metamorphosis of insects may be incomplete or complete depending on the growth of the insect. These insects possess the external outer layer which is very hard and thick, you can see. So very hard layer which is present is a covering on the external structure of the insect which is called as cuticle. This cuticle plays an important role for the survival of an insect because it forms a protective layer of the insect. Not only that, it has a lot of other functions as well. Excretion is mainly by the malfeasant tubules, which helps maintaining the ionic balance of the insect. So because of this characteristics, the insects are grouped, they are classified under the class insecta of the phylum Arthropoda. So what is an insect? So insect, the word insect, the word, the not world, the word insect derived from the Latin word insectum, which means to cut in two. The insects whose body is divided into three regions, head, thorax, and abdominal regions, having two pairs of wings and three pairs of legs, four, four legs, mid legs and hind legs respectively. The genital organs are present at the tip of the body or the posterior region of the body. And these insects have a decentralized nervous system. They have open blood system, open circulatory system. How is the body? The body, both the sides of the body or the mirror images. Half of the body is a mirror image of the other half, which means the bilateral symmetry. When you cut the insect in the middle, both the halves resemble each other identically, same. So we can say bilateral symmetrical body is present in the insects with decentralized nervous system. Insects occupy two-third population of phylum arthropoda. So amongst the invertebrates and vertebrates, insects occupy the 75% of the population in the universe, that is in the world. When, how do you classify the insects? The insects classification, that is an example, a typical example of a systemic classification of the insect. The insect classified in, the, in this order, the kingdom Animalia, phylum Arthropoda, class Insecta, order. So here I'm showing the butterflies and moths. So these butterflies and moths belong to the order Lepidoptera, family Noctuidae, genus Helicoverpa, species Armigera. This is not, this butterfly doesn't belong to Helicoverpa genus. It's an example quoted here and the species is Armigera. Okay, this is a moth. Helicoverpa armigera is a moth. It is a pest, agricultural pest. So the figures which I have shown you here is not Helicoverpa armigera, but I have shown you the moth here and butterfly in this figure, moths present in this figure, so that you can understand how to classify the insect. Got it? 
So what are the main reasons of the insect dominance in this world? Let us know a few of the characteristic features. Structural characters. As you have seen the insects, the insect body has an outer exoskeletal or external skeletal structure, which is called as chitin. This chitin or cuticle, sorry, let me show you, yeah? This is called as a cuticle, right? This cuticle is made up of, it is made up of a cuticular protein called as chitin. So this is light in weight and gives strength, rigidity and flexibility, flexibility to the insect body. Because of this exoskeletal structure called the cuticle, the water is prevented and the, that means the desiccation of the water or the water loss is prevented. So the water is retained in the insect's body. So that is an advantage for the insect. And the cuticle, what does it do? The cuticle acts as a protective layer, helping the insect from injuries, physical or mechanical injuries. It is able to withstand the physical or mechanical injuries. And the cuticle gives the shape to the, shape to the insect body and size of the body is also determined. It is providing the area for the attachment of the muscles and it is giving, the, uh, giving and maintaining the shape and size of an insect body. Got it? So, and not only that, it gives, the cuticle also gives strength to the appendages which are attached to the body. Let me show you once again. So this is the cuticle. How is the cuticle? The cuticle is very hard. The cuticle is thick in some of the insects. The cuticle is in the form of hairs, covered with hairs in some of the insects. The cuticle is uh, in the form of a chitinized uh, material in the form of some insects. So here, this is the best example of the cuticle. So this cuticle is hard layer, which is made up of the chitin, proteinaceous substance, and polysaccharides. Mucopolysaccharides are also present, and a lot of enzymes are also present. This cuticle is forming the outer uh, structure of an uh, uh, insect, protecting the <coughs> protecting the insect. It gives the shape. It gives the shape. The size of the insect and the shape of the insect is also maintained by the spreading of the cuticle on its body, and it is. The internal organs are well protected by the presence of the cuticle present on the outside, right? So the cuticle helps in attachment of this appendages. These are all the different appendages which are present on the, on the legs, the mouth parts, the head, the uh, wings. These are the, all are attached very firmly with the help of this cuticle. And inside the muscles attachment is also mainly because of the cuticle. So this cuticle acts as an offense and defense mechanism. This helps in movement. This helps in giving the shape. This helps in retaining the water. Thus the water which is present inside the body does not go out. And so the desiccation of the water loss is also prevented by the presence of the exoskeletal structure, which is called as cuticle. And it is light in weight. And because this is uh, one of the reason, first and foremost reason, for the reasons of insects dominance in this world. Next is the small size. The insects are small in size. Of course, there are large insects, but they are not that bigger in size, right? So most species of insects are between two and 200 millimeters, that is 0.1 to 1.0 inches in length. So they are very small. Most of them are very small and there are large insects like beetles, um, Hitler beetles, and uh, there are certain other kinds of spiders. Spiders are not insects, of course, but they belong to arthropods. And the insects are, uh, are uh, some of the insects are larger in size, but they are reaches within centimeters, but they are not in feet. So 
Thus, the, of course, the insects are small. So most of species are small, ranging between two and 200 millimeters in length. Some may be smaller, while some may be bigger, like Goliath beetle of Africa, which is about four inches, and walking stick of Malaysia, it is about 13 inch. So it helps because of this size of the small size of the insects, the insects are able to exploit various kinds of uh, ecological niches, which is inaccessible for other animals to move. So they can move to various kinds of uh, uh, ecological niches wherever they wanted to desire and conveniently live in those uh, areas and reside in those areas because of their smallness. So that is a major advantage where the other animals, because of their size, they do not uh, can accommodate, they cannot accommodate or acclimatize in a particular kind of environment or ecological niche, whereas insects do because of their small size. And because of this size, the minimal resources are required for them to survive and reproduce. So this is a, the small size is very much ideal for avoiding the predators as well so that they protect themselves from the enemies. So this is an added advantage for the insects to thrive very much well in this universe. Next is the flight. So flight, what is flight? Flying, flying is observed uh, in birds, yes. Flying is observed in some of the mammals, uh, yes. But in invertebrates, the flying invertebrates are the only invertebrates or the insects. So this, this is a highly effective mode of escape from the enemies. So the flight is very efficient means of transportation. That is, they move from one area to another area very fast to, uh, uh, to avoid the predators, to escape from the enemies and just in order to uh, move themselves, uh, allows them in uh, moving in um, groups to, together so that in order to search for food and reproduction and also allows the population to expand to new habitats and resources. So the flight is a mechanism of uh, maximum use of uh, efficient energy, uh, uh, hence uh, allows the, some of the insects to travel greater distances or they remain airborne for longer periods of time. So that means they are arboreal in nature. Now most of the insects, uh, which fly for longer distances or arboreal in habitat, which because they efficiently use uh, energy uh, through the wings and uh, which helps in the mode of flight. So their wings are developed in such a way they are adapted to the aerial mode of flight. So especially example, monarch butterfly, it can fly about 600 kilometers at a time without stopping itself. So such is the highest intensity or efficiency of the flight mechanism seen in certain kinds of insects. Not all the invertebrates, not all the insects fly. So they are flightless insects and they are flight insects. Again, the flying insects mainly have the wings. The wings are also different in nature and there are partial wings and their complete wings. Depending on the wings also, and the nature of the wings also, they are adapted or modified to various kinds of flight. Another important factor is hexapod locomotion. So what is hexapod? Pod, pod means legs. Hexa means six. Having six legs, that is three pairs of legs makes into six. So having uh, our presence of six legs on the three thoracic segments, which you have already seen in the figures in the previous slides, because of the presence of six legs on the three thoracic segments, they're able to adapt to various modes of locomotion. The insect will have equilibrium 
during all the phases of its locomotion. This hexapod locomotive mechanism is also an advantageous feature for an insect to live. And presence of compound eyes. So what are compound eyes? The compound eyes, the insects have compound eyes. Most of the adult insects and names consist of the compound eyes. These compound eyes or visual organs, that is they are organs of sight, which contains large number of hexagonal units called as omatidia. Because of the presence of this omatidia, I'll show you the compound eyes. Yeah, you can see the compound eyes. These are the compound eyes. All the omatidia, they, there is no single oscilli here. There are different oscilli in the form of omatidia which are present, it makes the compound eyes. These are also compound eyes. These are the oscilli. Okay. So these uh, omatidia, they are the number of hexagonal units are known as omatidia. And these, the, these omatidia, uh, they, uh, they are the visual organs in the form of compound eyes. And due to the presence of this large number of omatidia, even if some or few omatidia get damaged also, the insects, it does not lose the power of vision. So, and this compound eye comprises of how many omatidia, especially in dragonflies, it consists of about 28,000 omatidia. Like in 28,000 of omatidia, some of the omatidia are spoiled or damaged. That means the dragonflies are not blind. It, it will be able to see even uh, with the other, other omatidia present in the compound eyes. But anyways, the compound eyes has not clear vision. It has mosaic vision. So the house flies and dragon flies, they have eyes that cover most of their head. When you look at, I think you have the uh, idea of house flies and dragon flies, right? So I have not kept the figures over here, uh, but you have got the idea. House flies and dragon flies have eyes covered with most of their head, right? So this gives them almost 360 degree vision because of the compound eyes, because of the omatidia which are present, each omatidia uh, locates an image. So all the images are received, perceived from, by each omatidia in the form of a vision. So here, because the spreading of the compound eyes almost uh, three, uh, 360 degree vision is present, all cover, most, cover almost over their head, uh, the eyes get 360 degree vision, got it? Because of their large covering of the compound eyes on their head, they're able to see their predators from all directions uh, in the form of an omitaria, which are present inside the compound eye, which has 360 degree vision, got it? So that is uh, that kind of compound eyes are present in, uh, insects which acts as an efficient living of the insects and in, uh, uh, efficient creatures living in this world. Scattered sense organs. The sense organs, what are the sense organs? Sense organs are the sensory organs which receive certain kinds of uh, smell or sense of touch or sense of hearing, these are all the sense organs. These sense organs are also the eyes or uh, like visual organs, gustatory organs that is sensors of taste, the olfactory organs which are the organs of smell and uh, tactile organs, the organs of touch. They're distributed in various parts of the body. They're not concentrated on, on only one part. They're present or scattered on various parts of the body. So. Just when we, that's fine. Uh, when you have experimented with any insect, if you wanted to hold the insect, if you go nearer them, they just fly away because they have all the sensory organs scattered, surrounded by this by the body. 
various kinds of sensory organs are present are scattered all over the body that is why when we are able to catch those insects also we can't reach them because they are very fast because of the scattered sense organs not only scattered sense organs because of their trachealar system because of their body structure because of their internal body anatomy all these plays a very important role in their dominance uh, presence in this environment so like antennae eyes mouth parts in the head legs with claws even the legs legs with claws on thorax tympanum that is the auditory membrane the sensory appendages in the form of anal cerci which are present at the posterior regions of the male and the females in the form of cerci they are also sensory appendages they feel and they, of course they are not only sensory appendages they are all they are also help in population as well in the reproductive uh, phase at the posterior uh, end of the abdomen so presence of all these external parts and presence of the uh, tactile organs presence of the sense organs uh, scattered all over the body and the scattering on all parts of the body prevents the chance of all being damaged so the insects even though they are small because of the presence of all these kinds of uh, scattered sense organs the or uh, the body parts are not damaged and they are escaped very easily from the predators and they are able to thrive very well developmental state characteristic features so when you come to the development of an insect the development of insect is uh, the egg laying capacity of the females is very much high which is called as high fecundity what is fecundity fecundity is the egg laying capacity of the female insects whenever you look at the insects the insects doesn't lay one egg or two eggs so they lay large number of eggs for example the queen honey bee can produce 4000 eggs per day so the other moths they can produce minimum 100 eggs or minimum 50 eggs per day so or but one egg is not laid by this females that means fecundity egg laying capacity is more in insects so uh, because of this developmental characteristic feature so also they are able to propagate their perpetuate the species in a high in a high level so because of the large number of fecundity high number of fecundity presence of the insects the method of reproduction so many species of the insects such as aphid scales thrips midgets they can reproduce even without the presence of male insect so this kind of uh, reproduction is called as parthenogenesis without the without the aid of the males so oviparous some of they are the egg lay that means the young ones are very well protected in the eggs and then they are changed into the next stage and some of them are viviparous that means they directly give birth to the active young and these are parthenogenic some of the insects are having parthenogenicity some of the insects are oviparous in nature some of them are viviparous all these the methods of reproduction makes the insects to grow their species in enormous number so not a single kind of uh, method is not present here various kinds of methods of reproduction is present here in insects so that which gives an example which which quotes that uh, their population uh, it, it survives in wherever it is uh, present in an ecological niche and control reproduction one more important feature present in their developmental character what is that even though the insects consists of highest fecundity the egg laying capacity is more so there is also high degree of control over reproduction by reducing the number of females that can lay eggs not so not only they possess the highest fecundity but also there is a control over reproduction by 
reducing the number of females. So as they lay eggs, some of them, uh, as, uh, that means the number of females are also reduced by the nature itself. So as the fecundity is more, the, fecundity, the females the grows and they grow on in number and uh, all, if all the eggs are survived and they leads to the active young. So here, what I'm telling, trying to tell you is, the, uh, to, uh, even though their population is increasing because of the highest fecundity, on the other hand, there is a control over reproduction also by reducing the number of females. That means the, those females which can lay eggs are less in number when compared to the other females. Got it? So that is the nature the survival of survival of these insects in the nature. This character is mostly seen in the social insects such as honeybees and termites. For example, honeybees and termites. So honeybees, honeybees, not all the honeybees lays eggs, right? So the egg laying capacity is present only for a queen honeybee. So what this point here? So even the workers or females here, they're not able to reproduce sterile females. Example. So here the reducing the number of females, the control over reproduction is present here. That is likewise in termites also. The queen termite only is capable of reproducing and producing the eggs. So, whereas the other worker termites are not able to produce the eggs, they are sterile. So here, this is the best example you can remember that even though the fecundity is high, the queen bee lays about 4,000 eggs per day. So the control over reproduction is there by the control of sterile females is not they, do, they are not able to lay the eggs because of the sterile nature of the worker bees. Only the one which is laying eggs here is the queen honey bee. So here the controlled reproduction is present only for the honey bee, the queen honey bee, not for all the other honey bees. So these are all the features, the developmental characters with high fecundity rate, method of reproduction with various uh, different uh, methods of reproduction, and controlled reproduction in different kinds of insects, which shows a uh, best example for the uh, survival of their fittest and survival of their dominance in this environment that is in the, on the earth. Behavioral adaptations. Behavioral adaptations. What is behavior? So what, what is behavior? The strategy of showing the, the defense and offense strategy adopted by some of the insects. So just uh, by imitating or mimic, mimicking, mimicking the voice of other dangerous insects by pro thus protecting themselves from the enemies. So that kind of defense is shown and it is not shown by all the insects. Certain kinds of insects, they show mimicry they mimic the environment. For example, certain kinds of moths, certain kinds of insects like stick insects. The stick insects, leaf insects, I have not shown the pictures here. If I have shown the pictures, it would be very nice. I'll show you while uh, teaching uh, you uh, about the insects and the classification, okay? So, does, uh, for example, leaf insect. The insect will be in the resembling the leaf only. So we, uh, anybody will be mistaken the insect to be leaf, stick insects. The anybody, even the man or even uh, the other animals or the other insects also will be mistaken the leaf insect to be uh, or stick insect to be an insect. They, it because they seems or they resemble the sticks or the leaves. That means they're mimicking the environment thus as if they are pretending they are leaves or sticks so that in order to escape from the predators, so they're mimicking the environment. So likewise, they mimic, some of the insects mimic the other insects. So attention, they draw their attention. 
so, uh, so such that uh, they belong to their own family. So such behavioral adaptations, for example, Colorado potato beetles, when disturbed, draw their legs beneath and drop to the ground and pretend as if they're dead. Hairy caterpillars, example, hairy caterpillars. So, so when disturbed, what they do? They draw their legs beneath and drop to the ground as if, and pretend as if they are dead. That means they act. Their acting is also seen in this insects. So mimicry is seen. They imitate the voice of the dangerous or other dangerous insects. They mimic the environment and they pretend to be dead. So these are all the behavioral adaptations which are seen in certain kinds of insects. Construction of protective structures. Some insect, what do they do? Uh, some insects construct shelter. That means they, they, they construct their homes with the available material with the plants or any kind of material in the form of sticks or the leaves or in the form of plants, but protecting themselves from the various adverse conditions, the extremities of the climates like hotness or the rain or the winter or from the natural enemies or the predators or from whatever it may be. And also they try to store the food material inside the shelter which they have made for themselves during the period of the scarcity. Example, ants, termites, the termites, they, they build the termitoria. I will show these figures while uh, uh, telling about these termites and so on and so forth, okay? So the ants also, they build galleries. So have you ever seen ants going in a line and they're moving into a crevices and they build the galleries inside the holes. That means they store the grains over there. So they store the grains for the next season when the food is not available. They, uh, termites, for example, termites, there is termitoria. You might have seen termitoria also. The termitoria in Telugu, it is called as chedalu, uh, chedaputtalu. Okay, where this chedaputtalu, the chedaputtalu means termitoria. In this termitoria, the termites will be there. There are different rooms for storing the uh, food. And they are keep, they are for keeping the queen in one place. They are keeping the uh, different uh, castes, different groups of their uh, families in different uh, places inside the termitoria. That means the construct, the, the insects, they construct, so certain kinds of insects, they construct the shelter in such a way, they store the food material during the period of scarcity, as well as they, they keep their young ones or the eggs or the every ones to be protected from other, other insects or other enemies. So example, honeycomb in the case of honeybees, termitoria in the case of termites, cases or bags in the case of case worms or bag worms, ants galleries in the cases of ants, okay? So this also proves to be very dominant feature. And the feeds on variety of foods and specificity of food. So this nature also. So different insects feeds on different kinds of food. They're phytophagus in nature, they're animophagus in nature, some of them feeds on poppy food, some of them feeds on larvae, some of them feeds on the blood hem hematophagus in nature, some of them are omnivorous in nature. So depending on the food they get, there are different lots of insects, the, there are different uh, habitats uh, which are present in the insects. And so they feed on varieties of foods and such as such they're more parts are also modified. They feed the juices, they feed the nectar, some of the insects feed the nectar, the, some, of the, some of the insects feed the blood, some of the insects chew on the uh, fecal matter, some of the insects feed on the food which is available to them in the form of filth, some of them feed on the 
uh, uh, different plant material, like different modifications of moth parts are also seen based on the variety of the food they take. So the specificity, depending on the specificity of the food, the moth parts of the insects are also modified, such as siphoning type, piercing type of moth parts, the sucking type of mouth parts, sponging type of mouth parts, and lapping type of mouth parts. So another important feature of this dominance of these insects are <clears throat> protective adaptations and devices. I've just told you about the mimicry. That is, the, they mimic the environment by producing various kinds of sounds. Here, the morphological adaptations, coming to the morphological adap adaptations also, <clears throat> there is mimicry. As I told you, the leaf insects and stick insects, they show their body shape and uh, body color look like the part of a plant or an insect. This comes under the morphological adaptations, which is in the form of a mimicry, which I have already told you in the previous slide. Okay, physiological adaptations. <clears throat> Some of the insects, they produce certain kinds of substances from their bodies in the form of a poisons or a toxins or unpleasant orders from their bodies. And thus, these substances or the toxins which are released by certain kinds of insects, they possess the warning coloration by imitating certain distasteful insects, right? So these insects which release poisons or unpleasant orders from their body, or they may also possess the warning coloration on their body by imitating certain distasteful insects. So these are all certain kinds of morphological and physiological adaptations shown by the insects, thus by uh, avoiding the other kinds of predators. So showing their survival of the fittest. Example, stink bugs. They have specialized exocrine glands located on the thorax or abdominal region which produce a certain kind of smell called as foul smell hydrocarbons. The hydrocarbons are present. So this smell is in the form of a foul secretion, which is of uh, hydrocarbons. So foul smelling hydrocarbons are produced by the stink bugs and through the exocrine glands. So this is a protective, uh, this is a protective warning for, from this insect so that <clears throat> other insects or other organisms avoid eating the stink bugs because of this foul smelling hydrocarbons produced by the stink bugs. Got it? Maybe this foul smelling hydrocarbons uh, uh, smell is uh, very much favorite for some of the other uh, uh, organisms also, which they feed on the stink bugs. That is also there. But this is shown in the food webs and food chains. This is uh, uh, an example of survival of the fittest. The larvae of swallow tail butterflies have irreversible glands called as osmeteria. So remember, this is also an important and interesting point. This is located just behind the head. When disturbed, they release repellent, volatile, and waves their body back and forth to ward of intruders. Got it? So swallowtail butterfly, they have uh, irreversible glands called as osmetoria, which are present behind the, behind the head. So when we disturb or when anybody, any organism or any animal disturbs the swallowtail butterflies, they release a, a repellent, volatile and waves. They waves its body back and such that this uh, nature of this uh, movement of the body makes the intruders to move away from it, okay? Some blister beetles belonging to Meloidia, it produced can canthridine. This is a canthridine is a substance which is a strong irritant and blistering agent which forms blisters. This is a toxin or a very hot uh, uh, acid-like substance, the canthridine is produced by blister beetles. And when, they, when uh, anybody contact, comes in contact with the blister beetle, 
It sprays the cantharidine in the form of a spray. Thus, this spray acts as a strong irritant and blisters are formed when it is sprayed on to the other organisms. For example, if it is sprayed on our skin, our skin gets blisters, our skin gets boils. It gets hot boils because of the strong chemicals present in the form of cantharidin. It's in the form of an acid, bombarding beetles. Example, bombarding beetles also, they are called as bombarding beetles because they bombard the uh, uh, substance, the poisonous substance from their body and uh, in the form of a spray. So, which really, um, which, uh, which really produces a heat on the skin. If the skin is come in contact with such a kind of bombard beetle, so the skin also gets heated with a high temperature uh, chemical release from the bombardier beetles. beetles. And presence of cuticle that I already told you, right? So these are all the different types of uh, different uh, uh, points that is the physiological adaptations, morphological adaptation, feeding mechanism, reproductive mechanism or fecundity, the uh, behavioral adaptations, the construction of the, the construction or protective structures uh, by the insects, the developmental uh, characteristic features such as method of reproduction, high fecundity control of reproduction, and the presence of various kinds of organs uh, in the form of sense organs or the uh, type of locomotion they have, the hexapod locomotion, presence of compound eyes, presence of their wings, the fore wings and hind wings, and uh, due to their small size, small size, and due to the presence of the exo exoskeletal structures. So, because of all these structural and uh, morphological, physiological uh, uh, things which are present in an insect, this uh, shows uh, dominance in this world. Okay, so so insect usually refers. Uh, to familiar pests or disease carriers. So not only insects refer to um, uh, pests or disease carriers, but there are also insects which are economically important insects. There are insects which are uh, social insects and there are insects which are medically important insects and there are beneficial insects. There are harmful insects as well. Many insects, however, are beneficial for a human viewpoint. And uh, these, uh, these insects, they have dominated the universe. And they, without this, without the presence of insects, there is no, there is no life, we can say, because uh, we eat, what we eat is mainly because of the plants. The plants are getting pollinated by the insects, right? So furthermore the insects are the valuable ob objects of the study in elucidating many aspects of biology and ecology much of the scientific knowledge of genetics has been gained from various kinds of insects such as fruit fly and of course a lot of uh, investigations of hormonal action nerve action sense organ function many other physiological processes are also uh, often used an in insect study. Insects are also used as environmental quality indicators to access water quality and soil contamination and are the basis of many studies of biodiversity. So this, these are the reasons of the dominance and this is the importance of their, uh, this is the importance of, uh, uh, and uh, in this universe. Okay, so let us know more in detail in the next class. Until then, I remain now. Okay, thank you.